Hi everyone, welcome to Pop Paul's Workshop. Today's part two. This is a second logo that I have received from a friend that says, hey, I've got a color photo, can you carve it? So today we're gonna to give it a try and it's gonna be a different technique than what I used in part one. <laughs> Let's get started. Okay, now we're going to start out the same way. I have Inkscape and I have a new window that's open. And what I'm going to do is go and open a new file and bring in that logo. Okay, here it is right here. I'm going to go ahead and select it. And I'm going to open that up into the Inkscape. And just as we did before, I do want this embedded. So I'm going to hit OK. Okay, I've got the image now into Inkscape. And I'm going to do the same thing as I did before. I'm going to select the image. And I'm going to come up and select Path. Trace Bitmap. And then coming over here to the drop-down window, I'm going to go ahead and select two colors, because that's really all I need. And we'll hit the Update. And you notice something different. It comes out all black. Basically, it's a silhouette. Why is it doing that? Well, if you really think about it from a color perspective, the black and the red are really in the same value. So from the computer standpoint, it's looking at the same thing. Now, with Inkscape, yes, I could take some time and get this to work. But I don't want to do that. I'm going to go ahead and click the OK. And you can see it just brings it in as one image. And if I click on this and slide it over, you can see that all it did is vectorize the outline and made it all black. And that's really not what I want. I've got to carve the actual logo. So rather than take the time now and do this in, Inks in, uh, in Inkscape, what I want to do, I want to go over and do the exact same thing in Easel. And I want to show you how... It's really a lot easier. Okay, I've got a new window open in Easel. And let's put, import the same exact image into the um, Easel software. And we're doing the image trace. And I'm going to select Upload a File. Select Files to Upload. Then I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to go and pull that file. Okay, here's the image right here. I want to highlight this a second and show you. This is the actual resolution, 750 by 656. And if you'll recall from part one, this actually is a little bit higher of a res resolution than the logo that I had received from part one. Still not very high. But let's go ahead and select it. We'll open this up. And we bring it into the easel, and we will go ahead and upload that. Now then, you notice it did the exact same thing. It shows the whole silhouette, and it shows it all black. But what I want to do is show you this threshold right here. By reducing this down, you can see the other image comes out. So I'm going to need this image, and I'm also going to need, of course, the image that we had to begin with, like this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and upload this first to be able to get the background. All right, so we have that uploaded into Easel. I'm going to slide this out of the way. And then we're going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to go ahead and do the image trace again. I'm going to import the file. Select the file. I'm going to highlight the exact same file. Open it. And this time, 
we're going to take just a little figure by reducing that threshold down so none of the background is showing then I'm going to import that. So there's the image. Now how am I going to work with this? First thing, let's go back up to this one. And I'm going to set this as an outline and I want to cut it on the outside. And the other thing that I want to do, you see this line is very, very large. That's because I have a V bit in here. So let's go ahead and change that over to an eighth inch bit. So now that's going to look a whole lot better. And while we've got this, we might as well go ahead and blow this up larger. Let's take this little guy out of the way. All right. We'll make this larger now. Okay, and then we have this image. Now, to take this one, I'm going to highlight this whole thing. We'll bring it over. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and enlarge this. And we're going to get it to fit right back in exactly where it needs to be sitting the way it looked on the original logo. And that looks actually really, really good. So there's the image. Now one of the things I can do right now is I can carve that exactly the way it is and that would be great. In talking to the friend that sent me this, he wanted the figure actually to be raised and the floor to lee to be recessed in. So how are we going to do that? So what I'm going to do is go ahead and open up another workpiece. We're going to go back and select this whole entire thing. We're going to do control C. And then over to the new window and control V. And we have the new logo in there. So let's play with this one. First thing, let's go ahead and take this outer image and let's move it out of the way and we're going to do the same thing here take this and get it out of the way bring this back in and this time we're going to set this up as a fill and we'll make our depth at 0.1 of an inch Point 0.1 of an inch will do good. I do not need to carve it as deep as I did before. So there's that portion done. Now let's go ahead and get our little character. We'll highlight the character. And this time we're going to have this set at zero. No cutting at all. We'll slide it back into place. Get exactly where we need to have it. And there we go. We're actually ready to carve. So what I want to do is show you over here. That's what it's going to look like. That actually is going to work quite nice. Now if we change this to a 60 degree bit. We can do that as well. Generate our tool path. And there we have the image as it's going to carve. The next thing that we need to do on here is just add some text for the word office. Because that's what he wants. This is a sign that's going to go on his office door. So I'm going to go up to the text. I want to choose a text that's similar. So I'm going to select this one right here. We'll backspace out of that. And we'll type in the word office.
Now with that done, let's highlight it. Let's make it larger to fit in with the rest of the sign. There we go. And I'm going to have this carve at the point one of an inch also. So there we have it. Our sign's ready to carve. The only thing I want to do is position and center it a little bit better in the work area. So in this case, I'll highlight everything. I'll go up to Edit, Highlight Edit, Center to the Material, and there we are. Now everything is nice and centered. As far as the carve time, let's take a look at that. Let's generate the preview to begin with, just to see one more time what it's going to look like. And then we'll do the preview. The simulation takes just a moment to be able to calculate. And there we have it. It's going to take about two hours, six minutes to be able to carve using just a 60 degree bit. To do the carving on this one, I went ahead and used a different process because this is mask off. And I painted it first. In part three, we'll discuss the painting technique. Hi everyone. Thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also, check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.